Okay, so um, good morning. Uh, you guys should all have one. Um, for those of you who are new or who don't regularly come to our church um, and have never come across this before, um, these are simply a prayer request card that we get our congregation to fill out once every other month, so bi-monthly. That's bi-monthly, right? Bi-monthly. Bi-monthly. So uh, what we do is we get these filled out uh, from you guys. Um, you guys can just simply put your request down, and we will pray for them on Wednesday nights. Um, just some rule of thumbs are on the, on the slides up ahead. Um, so things to include, you can read it yourself. Um, and things not to include are on the next slide, if you can put that up too. Um, and so we just want to encourage you guys to, um, if you don't want to share, that's okay. Just put your name down, um, and we'll just pray over your name, and we'll ask God to, and his spirit to guide us through praying for you and, interse- and interceding for you. Um, but, but if you do, please put them down. Um, I think I just want to encourage our congregation as well. So while I'm talking, just fill it out. You don't have to listen to me. Um, well, listen to me, but listen to me and try to fill it out at the same time. Multitask. Multitask. Um, but I think I just want to encourage um, us as a congregation. It has been a great joy to, to pray over these request cards this last year. Uh, we started this in just January of 2015. And for the people who have been attending prayer meetings regularly and for myself, um, it's just it's just been awesome, and it's been amazing to see people uh, be prayed over uh, in, in a way that even if they can't make it out on a, on a weeknight, then they can still receive prayer. Um, and just talking to a brother last week, um, he was sharing with me how everything that he wrote down on the request cards uh, were answered in this last year, and I think that's just one of many testimonies um, which people have shared, and so that's an incredible encouragement. Um, and I think it's a testament to the power of prayer in our church and and, and the power of uh, intercession and the power of loving one another in Christ through praying for one another. And so please uh, take full advantage of these cards. I know a lot of you guys just scribble whatever down and those come up in the Wednesdays and we kind of just put them aside for a sec. Um, but but take them seriously and allow this to be something that can bless you. And We still um, pray for you though. Yes. We just pray something different than what you write uh, sometimes. Um, I want to get the next slide up as well. Yeah, that one, the English prayer. So that is a, um, you can't really see it, but it's English prayer at ntcbc.ca. Um, so if you guys have anything that you want to share with the prayer ministry, or if you just want to update a prayer request, or if you want to share uh, primarily a, a prayer request that has been answered, or just something encouraging, then you can email us, and, um, and, and then we'll, we'll take that in, and we'll share it at the prayer meetings, um, or maybe on this platform in the future as well. So we'll give you another maybe a minute um, just to finish that up. And then at the end of the service, please hand these out uh, to either Quan or one of the, the greeters um, or myself if you see me outside of the doors. Thanks. And just something else to add, as you guys are filling this out, uh, there are like over 250 or 60 uh, of you here. Um, about like 75% of you guys uh, write, write real requests down. So that's about like, uh, that's almost 200 cards. Um, every Wednesday we have about uh, like 10 to 15 uh, people come out. And so it's, it's actually quite, it's quite difficult to pray for all of you. Um, all, all at once, and so what we do is we usually break it up in half, but uh, one of the things that Curtis uh, uh, neglected to, to share, and, and we were actually talking about this just yesterday, was um, if you, uh, it, it shouldn't be if you feel called to pray, um, please come and pray uh, for, 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 uh, for, for your friends and for your family. Uh, please come pray for them. Uh, we, we can't do this um, on our own, um, nor, nor, nor was it ever meant to be. Uh, a, a ministry for a few people. Uh, we ask that you guys would um, all uh, try to come out um, at least once a month um, on, on Wednesdays. 
um, and, and come pray with us. Come pray with us. Come pray with us uh, for God's glory and for, um, and for healing um, in the congregation. So uh, what we're actually going to do now is we are going to, uh, we, we are going to pray. Um, and then we are going to uh, get into God's word. So uh, let's bow our heads and let's uh, spend a little bit of time in prayer. God, we uh, thank you uh, for having uh, saved us into a, a relationship with you, for having saved us into a family. God, we thank you that you, uh, that, that, that you Jesus, um, have done all that we have just sung, that you, God, um, have, um, ha have not only died for us, but you have offered us eternal life that we, God, can come and say, Savior, uh, Jesus, come and save us or we die. Come and save us or we die. And, and, and that really is the truth, God. Because of you, we no longer have to face eternal death. We now have uh, not only life with you um, in the future, but relationship and abundant life in you now today. So we thank you, God. Uh, we ask that as we receive your word today, uh, that you would continue to um, lavish upon us um, just uh, your, uh, your, your word, um, that you would encourage encourage us not only of your love and your faithfulness and your power, but God, that you would also be um, exhorting and calling us um, to the new life uh, that you have assigned for us as your children. And so we ask, God, that you would be doing this work in our hearts uh, for your glory and for our joy. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So... Uh, today is missions is mission Sunday. Uh, this is um, th this is the day where uh, we uh, come together and we uh, unveil uh, to to you guys um, as as the church family um, our plans for uh, short term missions uh, for 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 2016 and not only plans for short term missions but also uh, just our longer term mission strategies. Uh, and so we and so this is our plan. Our hope is that year over year we become more engaged um, in the work of uh, of, of global missions. Uh, uh, because at the end of the day, as a people, we are called uh, to be uh, to to be making disciples, uh, so that the worship of Jesus Christ can increase. Now, for some of you guys who are uh, who who are new, uh, we want to just uh, get some terms down, uh, so that we are all on the same page. Uh, missions is a formal term uh, referring to uh, the work of evangelism and disciple making in a cross-cultural and cross-border setting. So what that means is that uh, the work of missions formally, the formal definition is that we are uh, telling people about Jesus, we are uh, making disciples in a cross-cultural and cross-border setting. If you're doing, if you are doing the work of evangelism and um, and, and, and disciple making here locally, uh, that is not missions, that is just obedience. Missions is a subsect of obedience. And the end goal for missions is to increase the worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's the goal. Now we just want to clarify just a couple of things. Uh, if you're unsure of whether something is missions or not, there's two questions you can ask. Right, the, first, the, the first is this. Um, when you are going in a cross-cultural and cross-border cross setting, um, is your goal or is the goal of your organization to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to those who don't know Jesus? Is there a strategy, albeit loose or maybe even very well defined, in terms of how we are going to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to those who do not know Jesus? Right, and everything that is done is geared towards helping people know who Jesus is, whether it be teaching English, whether it be building buildings, whether it be performing medical, uh, uh, performing medical services. All of these things are done in conjunction with the proclaiming of the good news that Jesus is God, that we have sinned, that he has died for the penalty of our sins so that you and I would not have to perish but have eternal life. So that's the first criteria. The second criteria is this. Um, are there partnerships with local churches or plans to plant new churches so that the new converts will have a spiritual home to mature in? So those are two criteria. Remember, and, and, and I think one of the things that you and I uh, need to remember that missions, uh, mission work isn't that you as an individual preach the gospel, but rather the gospel is preached. And in many cases, missions is a team effort 
where many people do small parts, small roles, so that a few would be able to bring the gospel to the many. That missions is a team effort. And actually, over the past couple of years, um, this played itself out even in the way we have done short-term missions uh, uh, trips. Uh, in 2014, uh, we sent a team uh, to, 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 to Jiangxi, China, and uh, they did not have the opportunity uh, to, to have uh, many formal uh, uh, gatherings um, and, 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 and many formal evangelistic meetings, uh, but they did such a good job of teaching English. Uh, they shared the gospel when they had opportunities one-on-one, -on -one, but they did such a great job that they opened the door uh, for the team to go in 2015. And when we went in 2015, what happened was uh, there, there was so much credibility built up by the team that came prior that we were able to do whatever we wanted. So we had, we, we, we had an evangelistic night. Every night, we were able to share the gospel openly with kids. Um, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar, it is illegal uh, to share the gospel or to, or, or, or to bring converts um, for, uh, to, to people who are under the age of 18 in China. But because of the work that was done in 2014, uh, we were able, uh, we were shielded uh, and able to do that. And so um, this was a team effort. Right? And so we had a lot of people in 2014 who came back and said, I didn't really get a chance to, to share the gospel as many times as I would have liked to, but because of their faithfulness to the work that was assigned to them, the team that went after them was able to share the gospel with hundreds and hundreds of children. And so at the end of the day, missions is a team effort where it's not just about you as, an individual, uh, you as an individual sharing the gospel, but about the gospel being shared to people. Now the question that is asked most often with missions is this. Who should go? Who should go? And the answer is anyone and everyone who calls themselves a follower of Jesus Christ. See, one of the major misnomers uh, for, for missions is that uh, you need a special calling. You need God to, you, you, you need God to kind of tickle your, your inner spirit so that you would say, oh, yes, Lord, you have chosen me. I'm your butterfly that's going to go overseas and bring the gospel to those people. And that's just not true. One of the most helpful things that have been told to me while I was on the field was um, a, a, a leader of a missions organization told us, um, as, uh, as, as high school students, that uh, 80%, and this was the stat he gave us, 80% of all missionaries do not go because they have been uh, especially uh, set aside and called by God, that God uh, spoke whispers to them, and, 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 and it wasn't that at all. Rather, what happened was that they read the Bible, and in the Bible, God has given his children the call to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the nations. Right, in one of the verses that we are going to be looking at today in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so what that means is every single one of us, so long as you bear the name Christian, have a responsibility to bringing the good news not only to those who are local, but also to those who are around the world. Whether it be on a short-term basis or a long-term basis. We have, uh, we, we have uh, teams that go, uh, that, that go overseas for a short period of time. If you're wondering what a short period of time is, um, one missionary told me that anything under two years is considered a short-term mission. And so if you go for a short period of time or if you have decided to give your life to go into a new culture, into a new country, and you are going to settle there, plant roots there, uh, start your family there, integrate your family into that culture for the long run, whether it be doing it for a short period of time, long period of time, whether it be giving resources, whether it be training up people to go, we all have a part to play. And as Christians, we, 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 we referred to this uh, last week, but we all um, have a responsibility to this. This is not a responsibility that you and I can absolve ourselves of. And our hope is that um, today, as you receive uh, God's word, that you will... Um, that, that, that you will ask God when you should engage in the work of missions, not if, but when.
not if, but how. Because again, we are all called to participate in missions. Because as we said, the goal of missions is to bring glory to Jesus Christ. Right? Our lives are not about us. Our lives are not about us. But about making much of him, which is the work of missions. And when we engage in the work of missions, we will see more people worship Jesus Christ, both on a global level and also locally. And as we engage in missions, we will also see our own personal worship and affection for Jesus increase as well. In fact, uh, that is our um, big idea for the day, uh, that when you uh, engage in mission work, you will see worship increase globally, locally, and internally. And remember that the end goal of missions is to make much of Jesus. It is not for us merely to provide humanitarian aid. It is not merely for us to help people, but so that the name and renown of Jesus Christ would increase. Right? We sang all of these songs, and I'm so glad that the songs uh, were chosen. But what happens, what, what, one, of the, what, what, one of the traps that we fall into is that the words that come out of our mouth are, Jesus, it's all about you. But in, our, in the way we live, we say it's all about the people. And we must take a step back and remember that our job is not to help people primarily, but to worship Jesus. And the good news of the gospel is that as we worship Jesus, as we, as we expend ourselves to make much of him, that his call for us is to make himself known. And we do that by leading people to him and by demonstrating his love to them. That the end goal of missions is always to make much of Jesus Christ. And as we engage in missionary work, we will see worship of Jesus increase globally, also in our local church, and lastly, in us. Now, aside from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, we will be using two other supplemental passages, Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, and Acts chapter 14, verses 21 to 28. Now, normally, I ask you guys to read with me, but I'm going to spare you guys of that today, simply because there are a lot of names, and I really don't want us mispronouncing uh, certain names. You'll see what I mean in a little bit, um, and, and really, some, some of them are just tongue twisters. So we're just going to go, if you guys can follow along, if you guys do not have a Bible, please feel free to follow along in the PowerPoint. So Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 3 says this, In the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Now Acts chapter 21, uh, 14, verses 21 to 28 says this, they preached the good news in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with praying and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Poseidon, they came to Pamphylia and when they had reached the word, preached the word to Perga, they went down to Antilia. From Antilia, they set back to Antioch where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work that they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened the door to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So these are the passages that we are going to be going through today. Again, the idea that we want to flush out is that as we engage in the work of missions, whether it be on a long-term basis or a short-term basis, that worship of Jesus Christ will increase globally, locally, and also in us. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, we, the first thing that we are going to be looking at is the fact that worship will increase globally, just to get the most obvious 
us out of the way. As we see in our primary uh, scripture passage, you will be my witness. This is the call that God has given to every person who bears the name Christian, that you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The call of missions is to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. In Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, we see God calling his first missionaries, Paul and Barnabas. They were sent from their home base to foreign places. And we see in in chapter 14, verses 21 to 25, that wherever Paul and Barnabas went, that they went preaching the good news of Jesus Christ and building up the leadership of the church. Right in Acts chapter 14, verse 21, we see that they preach the good news uh, to the cities and they want a large number of disciples. And they not only preach the good news, but they also established leadership and trained leaders in order that new converts would have a place to grow spiritually, would have a place to fellowship, would have a place to be nourished. And it is a, it is crucial for us to remember as a people that being witnesses means that they are to tell people that Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and I say this, um, and I don't want to neglect the fact that they did many good works. There were miracles done. There were exorcisms done. There were many good deeds that Paul and Barnabas did while they were on missions. But everything that they did, God gave them power to do so that they would be able to then point people to Jesus, direct people to pay attention to them as they told them that they were sinners in need of a Savior and that Jesus Christ is that Savior and that he has offered every one of them eternal life and relationship with him if they give their lives over to him. Missions always involves the proclaiming of the good news of Jesus Christ. And when we participate in the work of missions, uh, the end result is that more people will worship God because the work of missions is done by God's power. Right, as we see in the first part of our text, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. Now, we'll delve deep, a, a little bit deeper into what that means later, but for now, all I want us to think about is the fact that missions is done by God's power, that it is done by God's power, that people are saved because God wants to save them, that God wants to save people, and he also wants to use his children in order to bring his salvation to those who don't yet know him. And for anyone who has ever been actively sharing the gospel, either here or abroad, you would know that this work is the most humbling work that you could ever participate in. And simultaneously, it is the most awe-inspiring work because you see God work through you, and in often cases, in spite of you, in order to work out salvation and praise to his name. And for those of you who have attended mission sharings, uh, this is, the, uh, the, the, this is uh, the, 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 the chorus that has been repeated again and again, that God is mighty and he uses inadequate people like us in order to go. And, and we wanted, because we know that not all of you have had a chance to hear about God's work overseas, we wanted to give you guys an opportunity just to hear from the words of those who have recently been there what God has done in China, in spite of, oftentimes, the people who are going. I wanted to ask Michael and Clement to just come up, and they're just going to share with you a little bit of, of what they're doing. And, and, and as they're coming up, um, all, all, all we want to just remind you of is that they're just going to be telling you the same thing that uh, the scriptures have been telling you, reminding you of the same things that I've just been telling you for the last five minutes, that at the end of the day, that people are saved, not because these two young men are great by any stretch of the imagination. They're, 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 they're all right, but they are serving an almighty God who is amazing. So I, I, I don't know who's going to go first. It doesn't really matter. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so I just wanted to share... Uh, one story of um, of God's power and grace when we were in China recently uh, in December of 2015. Um, so it was one of our, our first locations. 
uh, we went there to pray for uh, to pray for the locals and also to, to share the gospel with them. Uh, and the main group, uh, which consisted of Reverend Hoy and all the other pastors, uh, they went to a house and they were praying for a woman. Uh, and then out in the field near her house, there was another elderly woman. She was there farming. Uh, and then one of our team members, Angela, uh, she just decided to chat with this woman. Uh, and they just started talking. They, they, they were talking about random things like farming, how are you doing, uh, how's the weather, uh, and whatnot. Um, and then um, our sister, Angela, she, she really wanted to, because she saw that all of us were out, uh, were in the woman's house praying for, for the woman. So she wanted to uh, be with the group as well. Uh, so then she, she asked this elderly woman uh, that was farming, she's like, uh, hey, um, look, we're all here uh, and we have a, a reverend with us. Do you want the reverend to pray for you? Uh, and this woman said, yeah, sure, I, I want to. So then um, Angela brought this uh, wo woman uh, into the house uh, and introduced her to Reverend Hoy and Reverend Hoy uh, prayed for her. And it, it was really miraculous. It was really by God's power. Uh, at that moment, uh, this elderly woman decided to accept Christ. Um, and this, this woman had a family member that had been praying for her for many years and that had been sharing the gospel to her for, for many years. But uh, she had always uh, decided not to accept Christ. But uh, in that moment, uh, through God's work, uh, she decided to accept Christ. Uh, and what was really amazing was after she decided to accept Christ, uh, she invited all of us back to her house uh, to tear down all of her idols. Um, and before she tore down all of her idols, she also decided to uh, change clothes. Uh, and uh, what this signifies was that she wanted to be holy uh, before God. She wanted to put on uh, the best of her clothing uh, before um, she tore down all of her idols and uh, made her house for God. And so I just wanted to share how, how amazing that was. It was, it, it, it was all these random events, but it was all through the work of God um, and that it was really God's power that this woman decided to accept Christ. Right, so um, basically um, in China, um, you have to speak Chinese, right? So, um, well, when I was there, like um, in, prepar in preparation for China, like I had to like practice a lot of Mandarin. And even then, like my Mandarin is like really spotty. So um, when I was like forced into uh, sharing the gospel with children, like I was really unsure, really, um, really not confident in like my ability to, to speak. Um, but when I was uh, sharing the gospel with them, like God gave me words. And I was able to share the gospel in Chinese and even like share, um, pray for them uh, in Chinese. Um, so in the end, it wasn't really uh, my lack of ability to speak Chinese, but it was like God's um, strength through me so that um, these kids would uh, receive Christ. Yeah, it's really short. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So, so I, I want these two young men to stay up here for just one moment because I, I just, I, like Michael's story is like one of my favorite stories. <laughs> Because, and, and here's why, here's why, here's why. How many of you can sit in a field, all right? How many of you? How many of you can sit in a field? Yeah, me and Jason, right? Really, I think all of us have the ability to sit. All of us have the ability to look around and be like, hey, look, there's somebody. Maybe I can go talk to them. And then, and then, and then you go and do that, and then God does everything else. And that is insane. That is absolutely insane. And, 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 and again, it's not that these two young men are, are marvelous or amazing or have wisdom, but it is that they were open and willing to allow God to use them in order to bring about salvation. And he does, because that's what he does. And we have these young men here just as a testimony of the reality that as you and I engage in mission work, that, that the worship of Jesus Christ increases. Again, not because of their might, not because of their wisdom, but because you serve a wonderful God who desires to save people and desires to use his children to do the saving work. And so what we're going to do, actually, um, this, this, wasn't, this wasn't real fun, but we're just going to pray and we're going to give thanks to God for being a mighty God and that he would continue to do that work in China and around the world, and then we're going to continue on with our sermon. So let's just bow down for a word of prayer. God, we thank you so much. You know, just listening to these 
accounts of your work again just gives me goosebumps knowing, God, that, that, that I think that you are so small when in fact you are so mighty, that you want to do so much. And again, in your word, Jesus, you have said that the harvest is plentiful, that you want to do much, that you want there to be much reaping, you want there to be much salvation, much healing, but the workers are few. And so we thank you, God, that there are men and women amongst us that have answered the call to be workers, have answered with the call to go, um, some for a couple of weeks, some for years, some for their lives. We thank you that some have given their, uh, the, given their time in their life to respond to this call, God, that they may witness you work through them and that we as a people may hear of your marvelous deeds. We thank you for young men and women like Clement, like Michael, like Sharon, and the rest who have gone like Almond, we thank you for these young men and women who have chosen to go. We ask God that you would continue to send more, that the work in China, that we may hear more of your mighty deeds in China. For God, we know that you want to do great and mighty things. And we ask God that you continue to build up your church there that you continue to raise up indigenous uh, pastors and preachers and missionaries there, that you continue to raise up more men there for the churches are predominantly women. We ask that you would save men from their idolatry, from their self-centeredness, from their family orientation, and have them fix their eyes on you, Jesus, for you are the giver of life. We pray that you would do this work for your glory, for our joy. In your name, Jesus, we ask. Amen. And so, thank, thank, thank you, gentlemen. Um, the big idea that we have um, is, that, um, is that when you engage in mission work, you will see worship increase globally. You will also see worship increase locally. You already had a taste of what that looks like um, uh, just now as you guys uh, witness people sharing. Um, you see... Uh, that uh, in our passage it says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. May, uh, missionaries are not just witnesses overseas, but are also witnesses in their home base. Uh, Jerusalem was where Christianity started. And when Paul and, Paul and Barnabas started from the church in Antioch and they returned to the church in Antioch, and what they did in the church in Antioch was they told them about what God had been doing around the nations. And I want us to note that it was not what they had been doing, but it was what God was doing and the doors that God was opening. That was their missionary sharing. And their sharing aroused the faith and the faithfulness of the men and women around them. The takeaway from their sharing wasn't that Paul was an amazing person or that Barnabas was amazing. I hope that that's what you gathered, these ordinary young men and women who have gone. There is nothing special intrinsically about them. Rather, it is the fact that they have answered God's amazing call to participate in mission. And in that participation, God has said he will work through them. People as flawed and as inadequate and as unskilled and untrained as those young men and women. And it's such a blessing, really, for us to hear that. Right? Because oftentimes, what happens, what happens is this, that, that, that we hear people go, and one of the biggest mistakes that happens is, oh, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. And, 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 and the walk, and the takeaway is, these people are, are such faithful, amazing, good-looking men and women. I'm nothing like them. And yet what they have just told you today is this, that it had nothing to do with their skills. And Paul and Barnabas had nothing to do with their skills. It was all about the doors that God was opening. It was all about the work that God was doing in the hearts of those whom they were sharing the gospel with. It's such an encouragement to know that you are not qualified uh, based upon, uh, you, you, you are not, uh, you, you are not uh, called to go on missions based upon your qualifications, but based upon your heart. That was actually one of the founding uh, principles of China Inland Mission. Um, the guy who started it um, was Hudson Taylor, uh, the most famous missionary uh, to go into Inland China. One of the uh, one, one, one of the major prerequisites was not uh, what, what, what was not uh, what kind of skills do you have to offer, but whether you have a heart for the people in China. 
And for those who return, whether from a short trip or a long trip, it is their responsibility to report of God's faithfulness and might in order that the Holy Spirit would again use their sharing, use their testimony in order to arouse the faithfulness of their brothers and sisters who are listening. Spurring them to missions, both long-term and short-term. And really, that's our hope, our hope today. You know, I'm putting my cards out on the table rather early, but our hope is that as you receive God's word today, as you receive the testimony of your brothers and sisters today, that you will be aroused to go to bring the gospel to those who don't know the gospel, either for a few weeks, for a couple of years, or we pray that you would pack your bags and go for the rest of your lives. and that you would periodically make return trips here to tell us about what God has been doing, that you may arouse more men and women to faithfulness. See, one of the functions of short-term missions um, is not just so that we get to do a great work there and have God do great work through us there, but also that we come back here and share of what he's doing, and not only what he's doing, but we come back here and we continue to be faithful in the work of evangelism and in the work of discipleship. Because you, those of you who have gone, have now tasted and have seen that the Lord is good, that the work of the Lord is good. And when you come back, you will not stop or revert back to a life of video game playing, iPad game playing, time wasting. But you will now take your time and engage your family, your friends, your church for the purposes of increasing worship of Jesus Christ. Right. You have tasted and seen that the Lord is good and you are ready to answer his call because of the promise of his call. He has said to all, anyone who would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Following Jesus, yes, it's hard. Missions work, yes, it's hard. But for whoever wants to save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for me will save it. That is the promise of obedience and in our case it's the promise of missions that this, and, and the word that Jesus gives us again and again is this in John chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy but Jesus has come that you may have life and to have it with abundance or in abundance to have it in the full meaning that when he commands you when he calls calls you to obedience it is not for your harm but for your better it is not only for his glory but for your joy and fullness that when people come back from the field whether they've been gone for weeks or years or months they come back ready to serve more because they know that life with jesus is harder but it's also sweeter and more full and again, I want us to have uh, just, just one of our members who has, uh, who, who has come back uh, recently from the field. And, and, and personally, you know, I've been able to witness uh, God just continue that work in her life. Um, and if Irene can just come up and she's just going to share a little bit about what God has been doing uh, uh, in her life after she has come back uh, from China. So hi, um, I'm one of the people who went on the short-term mission trip to Jiangxi in the summer of 2014. And if you didn't know, in Jiangxi, the, uh, the, this province, their spoken language is predominantly Mandarin, and it's a language that I barely have a grasp on speaking or hearing. So I'd have a really hard time interacting with the um, local people in that area. However, I had a great blessing to see my brothers and sisters in the short-term mission team share um, and just passionately and lovingly reach um, to the people of in that province and just pretty much share joyfully about the good news to the campers, even to our drivers, to anyone they could possibly could, uh, if, that they could meet. And just being able to see that um, really inspired me because I really wanted to have that same joy and I really wanted to desire to be able to participate in this mission of evangelizing because seeing how joyfully they gave the news and how joyfully these people received it, you could really see how God was working within us. So um, I was very convicted um, at the end of the trip because I was almost heartbroken since I felt like I wasn't able to participate and, and I feel like God um, made me feel this way. I believe it was for the reason of just allowing me to see that he desired this for me as well. So when I came back to Toronto, I just really 
desire to invest in the people around me and to engage with these people um, that were in my life already because um, these were people that he had given me opportunities and I hadn't seen it before. And so um, that meant investing in my high school friends. Um, it, that meant investing and engaging with my family uh, friends and also my, the youth fellowship here in, at church. And so youth fellowship, it's very tiring. It can be very emotionally draining and it just sucks a lot of energy out of you. But I believe that God gave me an attitude change because instead of seeing serving as uh, a duty and responsibility as a Christian, and sometimes even a burden, I began to see it as a blessing because I could feel that I had great affection for these people around me, especially the youth. I would pray for them. I would just want to spend time my Saturday nights with them, and I just would want to build relationships with them because I knew it would be meaningful. And so just intentionally pursuing them, I could see how God had worked within me um, to just really uh, just really desire the things that he wants me to do because when I do something for him or with him I find great joy and so um, I believe that I'm here to share that um, when God um, worked in me in those two weeks in the short-term mission it wasn't finished work but it's a lasting work that he's doing within me right now so that I could continue to desire the things he wants me to desire and that's all thank you thanks man so again our, our big idea is this, that when you participate in the work of missions, that uh, as Irene said, she, she, she put it so well, uh, that, that your work does not end once you jump on that plane and you come back, but, but it, it, it is a launching point to, uh, to life change, uh, not only as you share with uh, your, uh, your friends and family here at local church, but also um, the work that God has done in you, you bring back here and you continue because you have tasted and seen that God is good. I want us to also note that missions at the end of the day changes us, changes us. And I want us to just look at the passage. It says, uh, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. I saved this uh, point for last. Um, structurally, uh, in, in the passage, I should have talked about this first, uh, but, but I, I saved this for last because uh, I want us to walk away understanding that God's command is never bitter but rather Jesus calls you to work hard for him so that you may know true glory and true goodness. That our obedience to God will ultimately, for his glory, is also for our joy. In fact, that's, that's how I have trained myself to pray. Um, I don't know if, if for any of you guys who have ever prayed with me, um, you, you, you would know that at the end of pretty much every one of my prayers where I inject it into whenever I pray, I say, you know, God, um, all, all of this, let it be for your glory, but also for our joy, because at the end of the day, our obedience is not just to bring glory to God, although that is the ultimate and the highest and the most important, that the name and renown of Jesus would increase, that worship of Jesus would increase, but it is also for my joy that as I engage in his commands, that fullness and power would be experienced by me. And that's the way that he has, um, that he has set this up. Right, as we obey by engaging in the work of missions, we experience deep joy and fullness as we are filled by his Holy Spirit. Now, there is a difference between uh, Christians uh, having uh, the Spirit in them. If you have uh, received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, the Holy Spirit is in you. He is in you. He is working on you. But there is a difference between that and having him fill you and empower you and you experiencing and knowing that. And, and the best way that I could explain this um, is to use, is to use a, a high school physics um, example. Uh, I didn't take physics in high school, so you all got to bear with me on this one. So the, 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 the idea is this, the, 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 the physics illustration is a potential versus actual energy. I hope I'm not screwing this up. I have, I, I have, I have someone who has a doctorate in physics, I think. This is going to be bad. Um, so so here, here, here we go, here we go. Um, on our own, we have no potential energy. On our own, zero potential energy. Zero ability to bring about salvation. Zero ability to arouse people to love Jesus. Zero ability to move people to, uh, to, to, to obedience and to affection towards Jesus. But as a Christian, the Holy Spirit is in you. And because he is in you, you now have all of this potential energy. And that energy becomes actual when you unleash it through faithfully engaging in mission work.
So let me say this again. On your own, no energy. Because of the spirit in you, lots of potential energy. This energy unleashed through faithful obedience to Christ. His power unleashed through you as you faithfully obey. Was that okay, Jason? Was that, was that seven, seven out of ten? That's a pass, right? That's a pass? All right. All right, I'm going to take, take it. I'm going to take it. As we obey, the Holy Spirit's power flows out of us, and we experience his power in three ways. And I just want to quickly go over that with you. For those of you guys who are looking at your watches, I apologize. We started 15 minutes late, which means that right now, in my mind, it's 1045. Um, so, so, just, so, 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 so again, um, that is just a reminder for us. But God empowers us in three ways. The first is he empowers us to know him and the hope of heaven. The second is he empowers us to be filled with the fullness of the love for Jesus. And third is we are empowered uh, to, uh, and we witness God's power through us. So I just want to go over three quick scripture references. And I just want us, I just want us to just soak in the promise that he has for those who obey. First is this, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, so that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. So the first way in which God um, empowers, the, the first way in which you experience Holy Spirit empowerment is that your understanding of Jesus, of who he is, of his realities, that those are heightened that he will give you revelation of who he is, his character, his nature, his reality, his truth. And that is wonderful. That Jesus goes from being something that is conceptual to you to something that is actual because the Holy Spirit has now taken the words that you have heard and spoken and he has made them real to you. Secondly, along those veins, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 to 19 that the Holy Spirit, that you may be strengthened or you may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And this is one of the most wonderful promises for those who faithfully obey. And the promise is this, that as you obey God, that he will fill you with his spirit so that, again, all of the words that you have heard and read, that the Spirit would take that and move it into your heart and you will know God's love, that you will know not only that Jesus died, but he died for you, that you would know not only your own unworthiness of his sacrificial action, but you would also feast upon the glory of what he has done for you. And you will be filled with God's love. You will be filled with his grace, with his mercy, and with his compassion. And you will know that he loves you. Not just conceptually, again, but actually. And lastly, you will witness God's power through you in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Uh, this is the Apostle Paul speaking of how um, he, spe he spoke in, in very pedestrian language. Uh, he used very small words, unlike me. Um, and what happened as he used simple language to convey the glories of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit used those simple words to enact amazing, wide-sweeping conversion and change. That God used ordinary, untalented men like Paul to bring about salvation. And I want to simply quickly just to recall the gospel that God has saved you from the penalty of your sin, which is, not only, um, which is not only an eternity in hell, but an eternal separation from him, an eternal separation from knowing his goodness, his faithfulness, his love. And he has saved you for a life with him. And your experience of his power, of his might, of his love increases as we increase in faithfulness to him. Obeying God leads to both his glory and your joy and your fullness. See, every person that has shared 
uh, today can testify that God has changed them while they were engaging in mission work. And you can speak with uh, the dozens of other men and women who have gone both on a lo uh, both uh, on a long-term basis and for a sh uh, and on a short-term level. And they will testify that while they were on the field, that God worked in them in such a way where it has increased their faith in Jesus, it has increased their love for Jesus, it has increased them in humility as they see God work in the midst of their weaknesses, and it has also increased their desire to obey, evangelize, and serve. The best servants we have here, those with the greatest servant hearts, um, my opinion, are those who have come back from the field because God has already done such a work in them, and they have tasted and seen the sweetness of obeying Jesus Christ. And so when they come back, they come back with, they, they come back, you know, and they come back running. Because at the end of the day, as we engage in mission work, this is the promise, this is the promise, right? As we engage in mission work, we will not only see God, uh, uh, the worship of Jesus Christ increase globally, locally in our own church, but also internally. And so the conclusion to all of that is this, that we uh, want you to go, that we want you to go. And the first way in which we want you to go is, um, is, is, is Deaconess Amy here. She is going to tell us um, area or opportunities that you have in order to go, in order to engage uh, in God's uh, mission work today. Is Cindy coming up too? Yes. Fantastic. Two people telling you about how you can, uh, how you can participate in mission work. Hi everyone, my name is Cindy, um, and I participate in both the uh, Jiangxi 2014 and um, the recent trip to China in Penning. Um, and I just want to share quickly about um, when I first learned about mission, I always thought of it as an obligation, but God had really opened my eyes to these two uh, mission trips that um, just seeing how he loved people uh, and uh, it really uh, ignited the fire in me and reminded me of how he first uh, came to um, he, he made me realize about his love five years, six years ago, so I came to know Christ. Um, and I just uh, realized that it's truly a privilege to be involved in um, the Great Commissions because uh, it's someone's salvation. And when you first share uh, the gospel with someone who, for, for example, never heard of Jesus or um, a child who's willing to accept Jesus, um, it just gives you this joy. Um, like Irene described, is, I, I can't even describe to you. Like it's, it's joy that I've never um, experienced in my life. And, um, and I truly uh, pray that NTCBC, uh, all the members here will um, also have these um, passions uh, to serve him um, because it's, it's the greatest blessing ever. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, I think it's, it, it is an obligation, but more of that, I think what drives us to serve in mission is because he loves us, and it is, it, it is the, like ultimately for his glory, and um, it's not just because we have to do it. So um, Amy's going to uh, just share a, li a little bit about the exciting opportunities that we have in 2016. So I just wanted to let you know, both Cindy and I are on the mission committee. So if you have any questions about uh, some of the announcements that we're making on behalf of the mission committee today, please feel free to ask us questions. I just in uh, listening to Pastor Kwan this morning, one of the things I was uh, reminded of, uh, reflecting on, is that mission is a gift of love from God, a gift of love for those who haven't heard the gospel because, uh, you know, his people are being sent out to share that gospel and point people to Jesus. But also it's a, it's a gift of love for those who are going out, like us Christians, because he's building us uh, in our faith and he's actually showing his fullness as uh, one of the verses that we, uh, you know, Pastor Juan showed us. He doesn't, when, he's, when God saves us, he doesn't leave us where we are, you know. He builds our faith and he um, wants to show us how how wonderful and mighty and powerful and all those, you know, attributes that we, th uh, we talk about God. So uh, being a par part of mission, short-term mission, can be a way to, uh, you know, really um, see God um, uh, at work. So uh, I, I think it's hard for you to see some of the, the slide dates. If you have um, a pen and pencil, please write these uh, dates down, because if uh, the Spirit is talking to you this morning about, uh, you know, you wanting to go on short-term mission, uh, write these dates down and maybe pray over, you know, which ones you might be able to go to, um, one or maybe more than one. 
Uh, the first one, actually a couple of trips are being made to Yunnan, China. Uh, the first one being in March to April, March 28th to April 7th. Actually, this is an exploratory trip. So uh, because it's an exploratory trip, this is uh, open to uh, the church leadership. So people on um, EB, like executive board, uh, the English ministry group, um, deacons and pastors. But with, after the exploratory trip, there is a short-term mission uh, trip that's being planned for November 3rd to 14th. Um, and a couple of other ones, short-term mission uh, opportunities are Zhengzi again, for Gospel Exchange and English Camp in July 14th, from July 14th to 25th. And also a new one that we are um, preparing is... Uh, a short-term mission team to Germany to work with the Roma, and that's going to be from September 25th to October 5th. If you are interested in learning more about the Roma mission, there is a March 6th vision sharing uh, at the Richmond Hill Community, RH3C, Richmond Hill Chinese Community Church. I think it's in the evening. I don't have the exact time. Uh, but if you, have, if you are interested in no knowing more about the Roma trip, uh, please come and see me. And then uh, lastly, in um, Pingling, uh, from August 25th to September 5th, um, this is a church leadership, uh, there's going to be leadership training for the church leaders in Pingling, and also from a nearby place called Yulin, and uh, this is uh, by invite only, so those are the opportunities that are available. So their sharing was, was uh, Cindy's sharing was unplanned and it was excellent. That was for free. Um, so we want to, uh, we, we want to continue to uh, call you guys. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> uh, for those of you guys who have been thinking, who are, you guys are thinking about short-term missions. Um, Otherwise, uh, we want you guys to also uh, recognize that the call uh, that, that the call for all of us as well um, is uh, for the work of evangelism, uh, church planting, um, and and long-term missions. So, how I want us to to to, to do this is is we we, we have short-term goals and we have long-term goals, right? Um, so, short-term goals, immediate goals. Uh, what, what I want us to do is I, I want us to, to consider um, building a relationship matrix. What that, mean, what that means is just having someone uh, in your life who is mentoring you, discipling you, leading you towards deeper faithfulness in the Lord, someone who is walking alongside you, someone whom you are uh, actively uh, uh, leading towards spiritual maturity, and someone whom you are sharing the gospel with. Uh, this, is, uh, you, this is one of the ways in which you are uh, demonstrating uh, uh, the, the heart that God has given you as a Christian. Uh, to, uh, to intentionally uh, uh, surround yourself, uh, to make your relationships intentional, as Irene said. So we want you, we, we want you guys to, uh, again, think about uh, not only, uh, not, not, not only uh, going away, but what am I going to do locally, immediately, as a response to what we have just been told. And in additional, uh, additionally, long term, uh, we want you to be thinking about, um, uh, uh, am I going to be, uh, am I going to participate in growing and planting a church locally, or am I going to participate in growing and planting a church uh, 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 overseas? See, all Christians, all Christians, all Christians are called to plant churches or to, to the work of church planting. You are growing, we are growing this body so that we can plant another one. And you're either doing that locally or you're doing that abroad. And so from a long-term perspective, ask yourself, is God calling you here or there to do this work? And really what we wanna do, what we wanna do at the end of the day is we not only wanna give you God's word and allow you to hear testimonies of his faithfulness, but we also want you to be able to respond. And so lastly, what we have is we have two reflection questions. They are in your bulletin. Uh, but we want to close off by just giving you a couple of minutes. The worship team is going to lead us in a song afterwards. I'm just sealing the promises that we're making. But just think for a moment and ask God to search your hearts. And ask him, God, where do you want me? How do you want me serving you? How do you want me uh, to be leading in this time? And so we'll give you guys a bit of time to do that. Then the worship team is going to, uh, th then I'm going to pray for you. Then the worship team is going to lead us in a time of song.
and we encourage you to continue reflecting. We just want to, I just want to pray over you now, God. We um, ask that you would um, be working in us, God, that all of the testimonies that we've heard of your faithfulness and your goodness, God, that that would not be lost on us, that it would not be one in, uh, uh, in one ear and out the other, but rather, God, we will have heard your call for us to make much of you, to live for you, Jesus. And that you'd be impressing on upon our hearts right now how you want us to go about obeying this. Oh God, speak to us, we pray. That we would be a people who respond not only to you, uh, not, 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 not only to your word given us, but also the leadings and the promptings of your Holy Spirit. So we pray, God, that you would lead us, ultimately, that your name and your renown may increase, Jesus, that more people may know about you, but also that we would be joy-filled. We pray this in your good name, Jesus Christ. Amen.